All right, we, we are off and running. Um, I think let's take care of the quick business first. Does uh, anyone have any issues with the uh, minutes from our last meeting, which was April 27th? I move to approve. All right, Dan, Dan second. So Nancy moves, Dan second. All in favor? Aye. Close enough, okay. Um, all right, Devin, you're back. Uh, we're really glad to see you. And we wanna hear an update on what's going on with your Harvard Five. Um, I can make you the host so you can share, but then uh, if anyone else hops on, you'll have to admit them. I think I can just share without being the host, unless the permissions are such that I can't, but- uh, All right, we'll normally... give it a shot. Give okay. It a shot. All right. I'll just say another quick hello to everybody. Dan, nice to Thank meet you. you. Um, and is it Alan over there? Yes, Alan. Hi. Hi. Nice Coming to meet to you. Coming to you live from San Diego. So. Oh, oh cool. look at you. NBU. I'm a California girl. Oh, okay. I'm at the Del Coronado tonight, which is a oh, great beautiful. Well, that's terrible. I'm so I sorry. Know. Know. <laughs> I'm actually a New Canaan girl who did go to California for 25 years, but I'm back in New Canaan. And okay. hello again to Sarah and Andy and whoever is there at channel 79. I don't know if that's you, Bob. Um, anyway, the short intro, again, most of you know, is that um, I did grow up in New Canaan. I grew up in this house that I'm sitting in right now, which is the house that my parents designed with Elliot Noyes, who was one of the Harvard Five. Um, and my mom grew up in Elliot Noyes' one of his very first homes that he designed for a client in New Canaan, and that house is called the Bremer House. This house was his last. He died during construction, and it's called or referred to as the Chivas House. In any event, I am a filmmaker. Um, I do a majority of my work for National Geographic, uh, Discovery, PBS, History Channel. So I'm heavily involved in history, science, exploration, um, kind of hardcore expedition stuff. But having grown up in this house and also being an artist as a filmmaker, my passion for the mid-century modern story is, um, is never ending. So many years ago, I started filming some of the key characters who are involved in the mid-century story. Um, and I was able to interview John Johansson, who was the only living of the Harvard Five when I started uh, the interviewing, which was back in 2006. Um, and I started that long ago because um, to my mom's credit, she said, Devin, you're a filmmaker. You've got to get these people on, you know, recorded now. And who knows when you're going to get back to it, but do it now before they go on to the, you know, greatest exploration, as we say in the Explorers Club. <laughs> so um, I was lucky to be able to spend a lot of time with John Johansson, with Jens Reesom, the furniture designer with um, John Black Lee, another architect in town, and a lot of quality time with Pam Gorys, though she is still living. Um, this was, as you know, several years ago, so she, her, her mind was quite sharp. Um, in any event, I will show you the trailer. And again, Nancy, Greg, Laura, you've probably seen it many, many times. That's but okay. I'll, for for Dan and Alan, who may not have ever seen it, um, here goes my, let's see if I can share here. And whoop, there we go. If this, does it look fuzzy to you all right now? We don't see anything yet. All it says is Devin Chivas has started sharing. Oh, that's weird. Let's try this. It's saying my screen sharing is paused. Do you see anything now? Nope. When our daughter first went to Bit, no and video, they were told to draw a picture. We can of hear house. the audio, but we can't see the we video. We can't see the video. Right. Strange. All right, let me. The permissions usually allow for this, but um, if not, we'll figure something else out. Let me try one more thing before I jump. Try this again. Screen share. Try this. How about now? Yes. There we go. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Here we go. And no audio this time, huh? Not so far. 
Is that Bronxville High School by any chance? I think it actually is. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> that's my alma mater. That's where I went to school. No oh my way. God. That's so funny. That's crazy. That's um we did pull that from stock footage. So um yeah, I think it actually did, if I recall correctly, it did say Bronxville in the credit for the archival stock footage. Yep. So I'm just going to change my speaker. I don't know if it's on your end or on my end for the sharing here, but I'm going to try to say change my speaker system and see if this does it. I apologize, folks. Let's... No audio. That is very strange. Hmm. Um, Laura, maybe you do have to transfer. All right. N now I got to figure out that. So hold on. Share. I'm sorry. Use the kids. Interns. Red. Oh, that's right, actually. Mm -hmm. Sarah, do you guys have any ideas? I would say transfer over, um, yeah, like complete hosting to you. But other than that, Zoom is not my strong suit. Sorry, guys. Okay. All right, I'm going to make you the, I'll make you a co-host. And then oh, okay. I, let's give that a shot. Okay. This is when we need a five-year-old. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's, it's the truth. I'm just yeah. checking one other thing on my computer here. The sure. other thing I'll just say while, while you're figuring this out is, Alan, I think you saw three iconic houses, which is part of our event um, in 2021 for October for Design. Okay. That was Devin's film. So okay. the Historical Society hired her to film the um, Madisoni house, the Selenese house, yes. and her family's house. Yep. And that, that was her work. Okay. So I just wanted to say that because I, I believe you've seen that. I did see that. And, and Devin, I'm a mid-century fan. Until recently, I lived in a James Evans house. I sold oh, wow. it uh, last year. So, oh, yeah. my gosh. Oh, that's so cool. Yes, yes. Um, well, let's see if as a mid-century fan and also patient people that you are. Let's see if this will work this time. It's funny. I was in Rancho Las Palmas this week and I was really trying to get over to Palm Springs, but I just like, oh. my allow. I was dying to get over there, but next oh, time. Oh my gosh. Next time. Do you go to California frequently? Not really, but I have some new clients out here. So. Oh, that's cool. Well, when you do make it, please let me know because I'll introduce you to the, to the people who will take you on that would Super be great. Cool. Thank you. All right. Let me try this again. Are you seeing my screen? Yeah. Yep. yep. All right. Let's fingers, fingers and toes crossed here. Just going to check one more. Okay. There we go. Perfect. There's My daughter just went to school in New Canaan. They were told to draw a picture of their houses. Kathy came home and she was crying and she said, I'll never, never draw another picture of what daddy designs, never. She said, the teacher said, those aren't houses. Coming out of World War II, there was that sense that we can do anything. Now let's get our act together. We have economic prosperity. We have a land opportunity. We've got material opportunity. And we're the winners. We won World War II. Here we go. Shortly after the war, you have a lot of people in architecture school at Harvard who were disenchanted with historical architecture. When Gropius and Breuer came, there were fresh breezes blowing through the school. Elliot Noyes was first, and then Breuer, Gorys, Johnson, and myself. I was the last. I remember visiting Elliot Noyes and a lovely house he had built already, and I was just stunned. There was no better place to go. Most people who moved to New Canaan move here because it's a colonial 
town. And so the modern houses were threatening to them. The idea of this white Bauhaus type box appearing within this community with traditional houses and slope roofs, et cetera, was in fact quite a shock. They thought they were crazy. They said, let's get those boxes the hell out of here. All oh, intelligent people said, we don't need this. This is not New Canaan. Can you imagine a big square box going on among all the little colonial houses? I mean, it ruined the neighborhood. What you have to understand is was about a way of living. Well, it starts and ends with martinis, I would suppose. The people who commissioned our houses not only wanted to build one of these modern houses, they wanted to enjoy the lifestyle that went with them. They had a hoot and holler and a good time. There was that sense of you work hard, you play hard, you get reward. Art is a reflection of who you are at that particular time in world history. These guys were not famous. They were experimenting, they were failing, they were out there on the limb. But it was that sense of experimentation and life and fun that allowed them to do what they did. The exhilaration, the, the teething of ideas, the imagination. And the irony was that it was a movement in such a traditional little town like New Canaan. Maybe that's the best place to start is uh, where there'll be a little bit of opposition and you feel as if you're really fighting for something. It was such an exciting adventure, this revolution. Terrific. That's great. Thank you, thank you. So the reason I'm here tonight is to um, uh, have a, uh, what is it called when your memory f flashes back to the future? <laughs> Deja vu. I did, thank you. Duh, I should have thought of that. But my memory was flashing back to the future. So a couple of years ago, for those of you who weren't on uh, TDAC or weren't on that particular meeting, um, Nancy had the kind uh, heart and thought to have me come and talk to TDAC about the film. Um, and then COVID happened, of course. And so, you know, everything was off the table, but here we are back up and running. And in that time, my very exciting news is that um, Herman Miller, now Miller Knoll, had found that trailer online and approached me about becoming a brand ambassador for the company in, um, in, you know, in a in a partnership essentially for them to donate um, fifty thousand dollars towards the budget of the film. Wow. And the yeah, so that was really really excellent. Um, it, it took almost a year to get that contract completed, um, partially because I don't know if, if any of you are in the design world or having to, you know, working on the library project. Um, Herman Miller bought Knoll in 21 and um, things were kind of like all over the place for a while. In any event, we finally got the contract signed almost a year afterward, which was just this winter. And um, they the, the full budget for the film, which is actually quite low budget, even for a documentary, is um, 250,000. So we are still looking to raise another 200,000 for the film. Um, but with that major endorsement, hi BJ. Um, with that major endorsement from Miller Knoll, um, we've been able to reach out to a number of other large premier brands. So for example, Miller Knoll is our premier furniture sponsor. We, are, we have now reached out to other premier brands like Ferguson, like um, DuPont, 
like uh, Dunn Edwards, which um, Alan in, in California, you may see Dunn Edwards stores. It's, it's basically, the, you know, the number one paint supplier on the West Coast and in the West and in the Northwest. So we've reached out to a lot of these brands and they're very interested, but as one might understand, these things take a lot of time, including the contract that we had with uh, Miller Knoll. So in the meantime, um, I have, I have um, been invited and agreed to at very, very willingly and, and delighting, delightedly accepted the um, honor of premiering the film on the West Coast at uh, Modernism Week 2023. So in less than a year. And Modernism Week, I think uh, many of you probably know that that's sort of the model that um, Nancy and Laura have looked to to kick off the amazing October for design, which I can't wait to, you know, be a part of again and um, and to see that grow in the same way that Modernism Week did. Um, I think this past year they had over a million visitors to Modernism Week. Don't quote me on that, but it was quite a big number. So to premiere there next year at Modernism Week is a really big deal for this film. Um, and then additionally, I spoke with Tucker yesterday, who um, is the one who invited me to come to speak with you all today. I said to her, look, um, what's very unusual is when you do a premiere, usually it has to be a world premiere and you give the rights away to that venue or whomever it is that's doing the premiere for you. But Modernism Week and Mark Davis, who worked with Nancy and worked with Laura um, to bring a group of about 20 people from California and New York to October for Design. He's a very generous guy, a huge supporter of this film. And he said, look, I'm fine with it. You don't have to do a world premiere here, do a West Coast premiere here, do an East Coast premiere, which is great because that opens the opportunity for me to do an East Coast premiere. And my ultimate goal with this movie is, is not actually just to tell the story of the Harvard Five, it's, it's, it's bigger than that. Um, and one part I will just say up front is that Nancy and I um, have, have a, a deal as well um, in that whatever footage I shoot for this film, I'm going to donate a full copy of everything to the uh, Museum and Historical Society to help bolster the New Canaan Museum and Historical Society as the go-to place for research, conversation, et cetera, around the mid-century modern topic in New Canaan, but also beyond. Um, so that's a huge goal of mine. And again, that's just a gift. That's what I wanna do for this town. I grew up here, I love it. Mom and dad are still here. I'm obviously here right now. Um, but to be honest with you, within the past couple of years, thanks to COVID, I've realized that this story is even more relevant than ever and more relevant than ever also on, to, on an international scale, which is because of COVID and also because of climate change. Um, the parallel to me is, is that this revolution, this design revolution that took place in New Canaan among the architects and the designers, furniture designers, modern artists, you know, everybody who came and participated in this very artistic community, after World War II, we're asking the questions, well, how do we want to live our lives now? What's important to us now? And what new materials do we have to build in such a way that we build a functional structure, whether it's a home or an office building or a chair that works better for our needs and also is able, we can actually make it happen because we have new materials, many of which were developed during the war. So fast forward to our present day, during COVID, you couldn't have, we couldn't have anybody inside. So all of a sudden we're thinking, well, maybe I don't need such a large house with all these interior spaces that I can't even entertain in anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need something that allows me to entertain outside or spend more time outside. Or, you know, in this town, we're lucky that people, you know, people can afford to build their own pools. And perhaps that's more important than having an extra game room or an interior theater or something along those lines. So that's sort of a simplistic example, but I do think that there are many parallels that people are asking these days. Um, and the tie-in for me about climate change is we are also in the, you know, in the construction world, um, really looking to utilize more uh, earth-friendly 
um, building components. And Bruce Becker, if any of you have met him, he's a Westport guy who grew up in New Canaan. He has recent, recently is actually just about to launch the Marcel Hotel Marcel, which is a gorgeous Breuer building in New Haven. If you've driven north on 95, you've passed it by a zillion times. Ikea bought it. It was originally the Armstrong uh, building and then the Pirelli building and then Ikea bought it and it had sat there for years collecting dust. So Bruce Becker, who is very, he's a he's an unbelievably interesting builder who um, is also dedicated to doing what he can for, uh, for the climate crisis. So there are so many tie-ins right now with Hotel Marcel, which now is, by the way, a totally off the grid um, hotel, which is pretty exciting um, in today's day and age. But coming back to New Canaan, the opportunity for an East Coast premiere, um, I know a little bit about this potential thing going on with the Playhouse. And I thought, well, what a terrific opportunity for an independent, um, uh, you know, and a company that wants to run independent films to have as a potential premiere opening party. Um, I think it was Sarah, the in Sarah intern who pointed out um, that or maybe it was the two of you guys um, that 2023 will be the 100th anniversary of the building and opening of the original Playhouse, which I think is super cool. So in any event, there appear to be a number of different tie-ins We've gotten, we've gotten really far in the past two years. We do still have 200,000 to raise. Um, and uh, I just hope that um, New Canaan, the town of New Canaan also sees this as a great opportunity to expand the understanding of how important New Canaan is, not just on a local scale, but on an absolutely, um, absolutely valid international scale as well. So that's, that's my update. <laughs> I, I Thank can't you. Wait, can't wait to see it. Devin, if, if you can send me any info about the sponsorship, I'm happy to float it to a couple of companies I have in mind that might. Did you need somebody to do the full 200 or are you willing to break it up? Uh, either way works. Okay. Um, I, for the big brands, I would I really would love for an entry level of 50,000. But, um, okay. you know, but if 25 is more their number, right. then that's fine, too. But I think for the big brands, it's wise to keep it in the in the larger chunk. Is that what Miller Knoll is doing? Yeah, they're doing 50. Got it. OK, yeah. they're doing 50. And, and again, for that, I'm a brand ambassador and they're the premier furniture sponsors. So additionally, in my contract, I can't go to, you know, West Elm or any of the other um, okay. furniture manufacturers, but there's lighting, there's, you know, Marvin windows, there's the mm -hmm. Ferguson, that sort of turf with faucets and, yeah. um, and then there's, you know, the oven, the appliance people, um, the paints, the hard surfaces, which I've recently written to DuPont um, on about them, part, their participation. So yeah, so um, Alan, I would love that if if you have, yeah. some, I would send you, I will definitely send you my sort of my boilerplate, which explains where the film is, um, okay. you know, the sponsorship with Miller Knoll uh, and what we're looking for. Terrific. I'd love to so, try to help. But thanks. Devin, also, aren't you looking for something from TDAC? Well, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Um, so, of course, if if TDAC were to um, put some money towards this budget, it would be a huge endorsement, I think, for um, others who are connected to New Canaan to understand that this is a film, this is a project that I know will bring tourism, will help the economy, will get the story out on an international platform in the way that, um, you know, you can't move a house. Well, you can, but it's a little tricky to, you know, undo this house stone by stone and try and resurrect it somewhere in Germany or Italy or Japan, for example. So my, my hope and I do, and my belief in this film is that it will represent New Canaan, not only, as I mentioned, in an international way in, within a story that's very relevant today, but it will also really highlight New Canaan on the map for an even greater, even you know, more expanded um, uh, viewership and then audience and interest in coming to town. So 
Yes, again, Nancy, thank you. Um, I would really appreciate TDAC's consideration of putting some sort of a budget, uh, some sort of a number within what TDAC is, you know, has available, um, if interested towards the film, because it will, um, there are some local businesses that I am hoping will become involved. And I do think that TDAC's endorsement will mean a whole lot. So I would, I- But, but also the important thing to remember is a year ago, um, Devin had pitched this and T at that point, we thought the fundraising model might be 250 people at $1,000 a person. And TDAC agreed to be one of those people and gave $1,000. We returned that money because Devin moved to a different model, but um, everyone here, I don't think there's been that much changeover, supported your project. So um, that 1,000 was returned and now maybe we could consider something else to support her. Thank you. And I do appreciate the support from, from last year. Um, and it what, what happened was it did coincide with this um, Miller Knoll um, approaching me and we weren't certain if they wanted to pay for the whole thing or a part of it. And we just didn't know at that point. So it seemed like um, it was the right decision. Um, but you know, here we are and we're that much further along. So um, I, I have always appreciated TDAC's support and Nancy's support and Greg's support. They've all been incredibly um, <clears throat> generous. And you know, my hope again is that this is just going to help bring further attention and interest in the glass house in New Canaan Museum and Historical Society. And Fred Noyes is, he's like an uncle to me. So of course I want this film to help Fred as well. And just generally, I feel like New Canaan, New, New Canaan deserves this. It's, yeah. it's just, it's such a, it's so cool that this happened here. Yeah, and a lot definitely. Of people, yeah, a lot of people in town don't even know about it, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I guess what we got to wrap around, you know, we have a very, very tiny budget that we can recommend to the selectman's office to, right. and obviously, you know, through Tucker, who's our chairman and works in the selectman's office. Um, you know, we can't, we can't come close to, you know, one of your, your corporate sponsors, but we do want to put, I think, an endorsement on it. And I, um, I run the Chamber of Commerce, so I'd be happy to maybe set you up with some potential local sponsors, you know, once again, might not going to get you to the 50,000, but, you know, I, you know, if we could put something toward, you know, the new Canaan premiere or something like that, um, you know, I think uh, it's a little further down the road, but it's certainly not too early to start those conversations. Um, I mean, Tucker had said to me, you know, since we had, we had committed to a thousand, if we could maybe uh, up that to 2000 out of our budget and, um, you know, kind of go from there. And as it gets closer, we would be heavily involved in the premiere and the promotion and all that sort of stuff. I, I know it's just a drop in the bucket, but I, I hope we can take it as, you know, our endorsement uh, under the guise of what, you know, kind of what we have. We have a lot of people coming to us and, you know, next year we could, you know, add to the pot as well. Um, I don't know. Thank you. And, and Nancy, what, what did you and Tucker what did you guys spoken about? With me? I mean, my ask tonight is for October for design. So I'm a little bit in conflict <laughs> with this, but. Right. Um, never, Nancy, I, never. Only no, in but, but based on the budget that was left, I was going to say, let's do 5,000 towards Devin's film. Okay. And think about next year's allocation yeah, as well. Right. Okay. I mean, I, I think that Devin is being very ambitious to think this will launch in Palm Springs Modernism 23. I think it's probably 24, but you're the filmmaker. Okay. Well, you it's know, based on funding. I gotta have a goal. Exactly. Yeah, it's all based on funding. I mean, if somebody in town wants to write a check for the next 200,000, I'll start shooting next week. So um, <laughs> it's very, it is exactly, it's dependent on funding and Greg is right, but Nancy is also right. <laughs> I mean, if the money doesn't come in um, by the end of summer at the latest, I, I won't be able to do it for February of 23, even though I will break Mark Davis's heart, who he's the guy again, who runs uh, Modernism Week. But 
but it is ambitious. Um, but I really feel like the time is now. This this film, it's it's the right time to tell it. The mid century modern everything is so hot yeah. right now and so au courant again. And um, yeah. all right. Well, I guess what we can do is. I, we don't have a quorum, but I think just as a gesture of support, because ultimately we'll be the first selectman, okay. um, I'd like to call a vote that we would earmark or we would, it's really like, um, a, you know, a commitment of, of 5,000 uh, out of this year's budget to help you on your path to get this movie made. So uh, I'll make that motion. Nancy second. Will, will second. All in favor? Aye. So that's everyone who's here. So um, no, I, I think it'll be great. And, you know, Tucker will work through all the logistics, but this is very important for New Canaan. So Thank the sooner you. it gets made, the sooner we benefit New Canaan. Exactly. That is exactly. very, very true. Very, very true. All so right, we'll fo follow up with Tucker and thank you very much for your presentation. And here's to hoping you can pull the rest of the funds together. Thank you so much, everybody. I so, so, so much appreciate it. And of course, happy to answer any questions. And Alan, I'll, I'll get your email from um, Nancy or Laura or Tucker. Yep. We can send you some yep. info. Okay. Thanks, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks, bye. Bye. Great to see, see you. Bye. Uh, that'll be great to have that uh, hopefully get get up and made. All right, so moving along, we're going to do work stream updates. Uh, number one on the list is the business development guide that BJ sent around. Um, BJ, you want to share a little bit? Um, I don't think we need to pull it up, up on the screen, but it's uh, everyone can see it, and it's definitely a great work in progress. We probably, oh, look at you, you got it. Um, we, you know, we, we got it tweak it around a little bit, but I think that it really is um, a nice walkthrough for people and, and a huge resource. Nice. You want to run through, Beej, or? Oh, you're muted, BJ. Oh, BJ. Here we go. I, uh... I got it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, so thank you to all the committee members who've been helping us out getting things together. We're, what we're hoping to do is have the ability to have um, groups like the Chamber of Commerce, Board of Realtors. There'll be a nice note from um, Kevin Moynihan and Tucker and town the town planner. Uh, the TADAC board, we're going to be looking to just write a you know, small blurb welcoming people to town. Um, and then obviously the Chamber of Commerce. One of the biggest parts that's challenging, I met with the um, town planner to every, every type of business has different needs. And where do they start? And it was suggested to create a, uh, a chart that if you were a restaurant, you would know the first place you should go is town planner. And then from there, it would be great for you to go to health, understand the health requirements. Mm -hmm. This has got to get circulated around so that we can better understand where do people go? Because I think what happens is it bunches up all in one place and then that department is overwhelmed by the information, you know, everybody going to that one department. So we tried to figure out all the departments. We think we got that. We think we got the um, different location, you know, different type of stores and um, businesses. So now it's a matter of getting the right people to look at the form and fill out what it's gonna be. It'll, you know, hopefully be pretty painless once they go through. And they also might group together businesses. Um, the crazy thing is even a place like a fitness uh, health facility has many hoops to walk through, especially if they have to do a build out. So um, that's where we are right now with the form. Um, we got our downtown zone map. So everybody knows the different zones. There is a huge, huge document that has 
everything having to do with zoning. Now it has residential in it too, but the commercial component. And there's a point here where I wonder how much we should put in this document as opposed to pointing them to the other documents. So that's kind of where we are right now is like questioning where to stop. You know, we want them to know that there's different parking zones and a little explaining about that. And every section has another little component. So we've been putting links in and the PDF will be active links. So we'll be able to, you know, they'll be able to go and if they pull it online, they'll be able to go to those locations. And then from there, it's really understanding. One of the things we heard from everybody was, well, who do I contact on planning and zoning? Now, if they went to the new Canaan.info site, they could get all that information, but this brochure has it all in it. So they could just literally look through here and find out everything, you know, all the groupings, the correct groupings of stuff that they need to know. Fire marshal, building department, even things like the health department and um, parking bureau, um, got the parking chart in there again, and then um, tax collector and everything like that. So it's moving along, has a lot of components and a lot of eyes on it. <laughs> um, one of my biggest challenges is it's really hard to get the town planner to be able to focus on what, how great this could be for her and, um, and be you know one of our big supporters because we all know it. And Brock was saying the commercial real estate people understand how valuable it would be. Um, it's just making sure the town feels it's as valuable to help everybody. So that's where we are right now. Can I ask one question? Mm -hmm. um, it does seem to me though that this is gonna be have to, have to be updated all the time because you have everyone's personal contact information and you know, yes. the, a letter from Kevin. So you're gonna to have to be updating this when he leaves, when everyone else leaves. Agreed. Is there some way to make it more, um, I don't know, sort of timeless <laughs> or no? We, all this, so much of this information is on the current .info site. Okay it comes down to how it's organized and how people don't, can't find things. Consequently, the phone rings. The minute a person will say, oh, I wanna to move to New Canaan and have my uh, hair salon. There's all these steps that have to happen. And town does not have like a concierge that, you know, hello and welcome to New Canaan. How can I help you? and then direct you to the right place, right? So what's happening is people are just picking something and starting with that, like building department. And- You know, I, I, I think we can uh, make a decision as a subcommittee that every six months we gotta haul it out and look at it and say, okay, we have a new first selectman, a new executive director of the chamber, Oh, the, uh, the assistant mm -hmm. in the planning and zoning. And, you know, then it'll be pretty easy because the basic information of if you're, if you're doing a hair salon, you need to start with this person or the fire department or whatever is going to stay the same. But I think, you know, we, we could just make a commitment to a six month review. I think it's a very good point to keep it fresh, but I think ah, the direction people are going to go on, go in is, is going to be, um, you know, is, is going to be in, in, in the right way. Yeah. And, and I mean, to your point, Nancy, it's like the minute you do it, you know, it, there's going to be some little part in there that's, you know, might be expired. But, you know, just like the brochure you're putting together, we have to just let it be at a point. This will be digital and also in, you know, in printed form if we decide to go that way. Yeah. So if somebody does have a change, digitally, we could change it right away. Yeah, um, that's the thing. So the cultural guide, though, is not going to be um, tied to anybody. There isn't a letter from the first selection. There isn't a letter from the chamber. 
for precisely this reason is we want to try and make it so that we can have one copy that lasts a little bit longer. So I think Laura's a, a great suggestion. Let's have a six month review so that the email addresses and all that stuff stay current. Right, right. Okay, good. We're getting, we're getting there. That's it, that's it. Um, all right, any other questions about that? BJ will work on trying to get this through town hall. Um, I'll work yeah, with you on that's that. Our, thank you, yep. that's my next step. Okay. Um, all right, October for Design update. Okay, so October for Design is coming together. Um, we have an opening event with the gallery stroll. We have um, the Glass House has partnered with STAR, which is Stand Together Against Racism, and they're doing a children's art exhibit around social justice. That will be housed at the Historical Society in our gallery space. We have a lunch for design with Jackie Shapiro, who's the founder of French Bull, and her daughter, Dolly Meckler, who is the founder of Holla Dolly, that's become like this virtual rage in COVID. Um, the big event that we're doing this year is a free walking tour of all, the whole downtown. And it's going to incorporate the churches, it's going to incorporate the land trust, it's going to be you know, everything about the history of Main Street and the Max Perkins building and all that stuff. So that's gonna be done through the Historical Society. Um, all, all of our community partners, I think have signed on. I can't think of anyone who hasn't, Greg, you can correct me if I'm wrong. We are working on a New York City tour of sacred spaces. I think we're gonna do that. And the Land Trust is having a progressive, I think it's gonna be a progressive dinner, progressive cocktails in all the spaces at the end of the month. So it's gonna be the 13th to the 23rd. The thing that I'm coming to TDAC to ask for is that the thing that October for Design has suffered from because all the promotion has been done through the Historical Society, and this is not our strong suit, is to help us with PR. So um, we counted that there are 68 light, light poles on Main Street and Elm Street. So we would like to do 50 flags. And we've talked to Laura about this. We've talked to Tucker about this. There's some issues with the, um, what is it? Scarecrows. Yeah, the scarecrows, but we can do flags over the scarecrows that are like what the caffeine and carburetors does. And it will just be an O for D and it will be sort of a, uh, we won't have the dates on many of them so that we can re reuse them year after year. So we'd like to do 50 of those. The cost of that would be $3,100. Um, Gina Federico last year did a little brochure that included everybody's events. So all of our community partners, Glass House, Grace Farms, Carriage Barn, everybody, all of those were included in that. And the cost of that with the printing is $1,500. And then we would like TDAC to fund $2,500 in PR assistance. And whether that's through Noble House or through you know, somebody who is working with the town anyway, but just to get the initiative out, it's not about the historical society, it's about this as its own thing. You know, working with our October, working with Docomomo, working with the sites that are gonna be interested in that. So the total ask from me, none of which really benefits the historical society. So I'm, I'm wearing my TDAC hat, I'm not wearing my historical society hat, is 62.50. So, I, mean, I think that sounds all very good and positive. And um, I'm assuming, have you talked to Tucker? Do we have that money? I, I haven't yes. kind of seen our budget recap. Yeah, you have about $18,000. Okay. And we're coming to the end of the year. So because yeah. our budget is if we don't spend it, uh, we lose it. So no, she told me to ask. I mean, we could obviously use more in PR, but I think also this, the flags, we're not gonna put dates on right. more than 10 of them. So we can use them over and over and over. No, that's smart. And it, it really makes an impact downtown. Um, do you know for sure that 50 poles have the slot for the, uh, the flagpole? No, I, I sent an intern to count polls <laughs> and I came back with 68. So I don't know how many have whatever the, the niche is. 
but I think that it probably makes sense to do 50 because we'll do 40 that are October for design and 10 that are October 13th to October 23rd that we will have to save for seven years right. until they're relevant again. So I, I think we need to, because not every lamppost has the hardware to put the flag in. Okay. You see what I I'm saying? I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. And, and I have I have a map of all of them, but I don't now. I know we have American flags, you know, that that go up around Memorial Day, but I don't know how you know. So how many actually have that hardware? That's a a, a slot where you can put the flagpole and the flag flies out. Um, so we'll Tiger know Mano, soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Can we get, uh, because it, it may be less than 50. It, it, it could be more than 50, you know, uh, you don't need more than 50, but it may be less than 50. So why don't we take a vote tonight that we approve the 6250, knowing that it may actually come down because you may not, or you may want to invest. In, in the part. In, in the actual part, the hardware that holds the flagpole. Well, here's the, here's the reality is the New Canaan Historical Society is really committed to this event. So if there is an overage, I think that the Historical Society will cover okay. that, which okay. is a benefit to the whole town. Okay. But I think that if we could get the 50 flags and then there's an over under, you know, we can make that up. Okay. Just, I'm just saying that we would want to, if we needed more hardware, we would want to order all that now. To yeah. get it installed on the uh, on the flagpoles. No, I'm with you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. So, who would uh, make a Greg? Do you have a question? No, I would so move. He wants to make the. Is it Greg's going to make the motion that we recommend six thousand two hundred and fifty? Is that the is that the number, Nancy? Yeah, that's what I had. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, and Alan uh, seconded. All in favor. Aye. All right, so we will make a recommendation to the first selectman's office that, that we would like to spend uh, 6250 6, to get these flags up and running, which I think will be very key to the uh, endorsement and promotion of this event and really make it feel like a community event. So yeah. I think it's a great idea. And I think for people like the gallery stroll that are sort of wondering, like, yep. is this an historical society event or is this something else? It's yep. really important to have it be that it's a town event and they'll okay. see that. No, I think that's great. And, you know, those lampposts are great and they're busy. You know, the, the, the scarecrows are on them, but that we came up with the concept of the flags, which I think is in many ways uh, very impactful as well. So, all right, excellent. And then the marketing material, is that, the, that's the, um, the brochure or the, the little takeaway we were talking about. Well, there's, there's two things. There's the, what you just, if you included the 6250, that included Gina's takeaway that, you know, Greg and everyone else contributed to, to make, make it so we had a handout for October for design. Um, but then there's also the cultural brochure that is underway and people, uh, the, the responses I got was, were very positive. So people are going to get Gina the material so that could be produced by probably Labor Day. Great. Great. That's going to be awesome. Um, so that's in progress. All right. So next we go on to Playhouse status. And um, I told Tucker I'd fill everybody in uh, on the saga of the Playhouse. Mm -hmm. So the town has approved a big chunk of the money that is necessary to do the work on the playhouse to move it in the right direction. And it comes from ARPA funds. And then also there's a fund where they've been accumulating all the rent uh, that has been contributed uh, by all of the tenants of the building, the, the chamber included. Um, so I think they're, they, and I think they approved a contract with some architects to really get the ADA and the, so, so, some uh, fire issues, you know, fire safety issues all online. So that's a good news. It's, it's, that's moving along because that's, excuse me, the first piece of the puzzle. And the second piece is the negotiations between the operator, which is Cinema Lab, that's now out in the press. So we can, uh, we all now know who that is. And the town of New Canaan for Cinema Lab to be the tenant 
uh, um, uh, and operate the theater. So I, that process is moving, it's grinding its way through Board of Finance and uh, the town council to get the appropriate approvals. And then the, uh, the operator is working to uh, raise money from investors. So then when the town has the building shored up, assuming everything goes through, when the town has the building shored up, they would be able, they would go in and do the interior renovations uh, to bring it to a, you know, modern theater experience. So it's all moving in the right direction. Things in municipal government, as we all know, move slowly, but it, from all indications, it's uh, moving in the right direction. I, as the chamber director spoke to board of finance on how I believe it's, it's gonna, it's so important for downtown and what a shot in the arm for all our businesses. Wilton, Darien, Greenwich do not even have movie theaters in the town anymore. So I think it will attract a lot of people from out of town and who will you know, come to our restaurants and shop and all that sort of stuff. So fingers crossed, but it is definitely moving in the right direction. So that's good. And I'm gonna lose my home. So <laughs> the chamber and cares are out looking for, uh, for new office space. And we've had a pretty good deal uh, for a lot of years but this is more important to the town, so. So you got any room, Nancy? What do you got over there? I got plenty of room, come over. <laughs> We'd love to have you. Uh, so that is that update. And then- um, Actually, Laura, else? you should move into the Gorys Pavilion. <laughs> At Irwin? Yeah. Isn't that like sacred space? Isn't it like- it's isn't it like a owned. museum it's town owned we have a gallery space in one part of it you can have the other part of it all right i'm looking i'm looking for space um any would anyone else have any other updates greg how are things going for you you're close to a month with tours open or three weeks the tours have been going very well um and we are now putting tickets on sale for the what we'll call the second half of the season we were a little bit uh, conservative. We put them on sale through June 30th, wanted to see what the demand would turn out to be, but it's, uh, it's been great. So uh, we are now putting the tickets on sale in the next week for July through October, or no, uh, November rather. And then um, on June 11th, we have our annual fundraiser in person, first time in three years. Uh, we've got some great sponsors and um, some good entertainment there. So uh, we're looking forward to uh, seeing as many of you as possible on June 11th. That's great. Congratulations. That's Thank you. Got my tickets. <laughs> it has yeah, been a long, <laughs> it's been a long winter for you guys, so to speak. Uh, so um, anything else, anyone else? Um, I will say just from the downtown perspective, I continue to see some new businesses rolling in and uh, discussions with local um, real estate commercial brokers that leases are being signed. Uh, we're getting another hair salon or so it says Salon G. So I'm assuming it's a hair salon right on Main Street, right across from Town Hall. I understand there's another service business coming on Main Street. Um, and I think we talked about this last time. We're seeing businesses expanding. Um, Manfredi is expanding, Soleil is expanding um, and Dunkin' Donuts is expanding. So the commitment is there. I, um, when I talked to Board of Finance, I, you know, because the question was, well, if it's not a movie theater, what is it? And, you know, I think New Canaan is going to always attract really unique businesses that are run by smart and passionate people, but we're not going to get a lot mm -hmm. of big, big, the, the big, big businesses because they're going to stay in Westport and Greenwich uh, and Norwalk and Stanford where the traffic counts are just much higher. Uh, but we, we, but we do remain attractive to, uh, you know, smaller kind of micro chain or individual. So, so far so good. I've been very pleased. There is now no empty space on Elm street, um, which is really great. Uh, there's a, you know, there's some empty storefronts, but they have been taken one from a a uh, very high quality linens store, Laron, and they were upstairs running their offices and they are now moving downstairs into the old Alley Valley B space. Oh. And um, the old irresistible space is gonna be this Barvita. It's, it's, we've been waiting for them for a while, but uh, 
Mike just reported that they're, uh, they just put a building permit in. So all good things. So, right. so uh, I think, you know, the, the, the vibe is good. All right, anybody have anything else? All right, I think that's it. So 7.57, uh, can someone make a motion to adjourn? Dan and uh, second, uh, Allie, uh, uh, Alan, sorry. All right, uh, that is it. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll see you next month. Okay. Bye. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Great weekend. Bye.